Hello and welcome to our Salvation Army meeting of praise, worship and the word. Our time to meet with and encounter the presence of God. And we've just been introduced to our time of praise with some music that encourages us to praise. And Psalm 148, well that encourages us to praise God too. It says this, it says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his heavenly hosts, praise him, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars, praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the skies, let them Praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and, and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princess and your rulers on earth, young men and, and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendour is above the earth and the heavens. And he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. And so with all this encouragement, obviously we can do nothing else other than to praise. So let's do it. Let's praise God this morning, singing number number two in the Salvation Army songbook, All Creatures of Our God and King. Let's sing together.
Wow, what a great scene. And of course, we have this urge, don't we? We, we have this, this urge to praise God. And that's why we are joining together in this gathering today, this virtual church gathering, this Salvation Army meeting. And Psalm 147 has verses that say this, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble. So sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God. The Lord delights in those who fear him and who put hope in his unfailing love. My friends, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. So let us sing together number 15 in the Magnify, the Salvation Army Magnify book. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. praise you today with our hearts and with our songs. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for your great power and for your love. Lord, we, we confess our need for you. Our lives don't go so well when we just spin around on our own. We struggle and we worry, we get weary and we get worn. 
yet you never leave us. So thank you for your presence. Thank you for your care over us. Thank you that you breathe renewal right into our souls. We ask for your spirit to fill us again today, to draw us close to yourself, Lord, and to work your purposes through us as we set our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends, in the Old Testament, we read one book called Habakkuk. A few chapters, but it's one book. And Habakkuk was a, was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah just before the exile, when their unrepentant sinfulness was at its height. They reckon it was around about 625 to 604 BC. Now, this book is a very interesting dialogue between Habakkuk and the Lord. And it's about the evil that he sees around him. Habakkuk laments to God that the land of Judah has turned away from his commandments and, and he wonders why there's no justice in the land. And God answers him. But he answers him by telling him that judgment will come through the Chaldeans, who are now destined to overthrow Judah. And so Habakkuk laments again because he does not understand why a nation, a nation that was even more wicked than Israel, will, in, will be given such a victory. Well, God says to him, have faith. He says, you got to have faith. And he also tells him that Israel will in time be restored unto righteousness, which causes Habakkuk to break into this amazing song of faith. And I'm going to read to you this, this song of faith. And it's Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And it says this, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall there be fruit on the vines. The labour of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like a hind's feet. He will make me walk upon the high places and to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. I will sing. And so with this confident message from, from Habakkuk, let us all sing. Let us all sing together an old Salvation Army chorus, number 16 in the new Salvation Army songbook, by the way, number 16 in the Salvation Army songbook, a very old chorus, and it says this, God is still on the throne. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, God is still on the throne. Let's sing this confident song about our Heavenly Father.
Hello and welcome once again to the territorial headquarters of the Salvation Army in the United Kingdom with the Republic of Ireland. It's a joy to be with you again. Spring is in the air. It's the lambing season, apparently. I was reminded of that as I was flicking through the TV channels recently and came across the Country File programme. Watching the newborn lambs took me back to a visit a few years ago to Minster Abbey, where the nuns, who had a great relationship with the Salvation Army, had invited us to come and see the brand new lambs that had been born that day. It was a real treat, wonderful. Living in the city, we don't get to see those kind of spring scenes. The nearest uh, we get to the countryside, really, is in the park and we go to Southwark Park. It was a real pleasure recently to take a walk there, which is quite near to our home, and the joy was to hear the sound of children playing on the swings again. After such a long time, that part of the park had been reopened, wonderful. And seeing a group of boys enjoying an impromptu game of football after school, bags and blazers becoming goalposts, it was just great. It was the bird song and the scattered crocus and the banks of yellow daffodils with their trumpet-like petals blasting out the message, spring is here, cheer up. That really lifted my spirit as I witnessed the beginnings of transformation and new life taking place in nature, adding that splash of colour to life, giving rise to that sense of hope that slowly, step by step, things were getting a little bit better and hopefully a little bit sunnier. Though if you were here today on the recording, you might not think that spring was just around the corner. Looking at the host of golden daffodils, I wondered who had taken the decision to plant all those bulbs of which so many people like myself were now the beneficiaries of their forethought. A part of that answer was in a new discovery I had in the park. I discovered a gate which led to what looked like a secret garden and I was intrigued to find a quiet space for reflection, created as an English country garden by a woman called Ada Salter, as part of her great work of planting trees and giving green space to enhance the community in Southwark. And we are the recipients of her work and forethought today. Ada, starting out as a Methodist a slum worker and later becoming a councillor and MP, lived and worked amongst the poor alongside Alfred, her husband, a brilliant doctor and bacteriologist, to improve the health and social conditions in the early decades of the 20th century. And if you walk along the Thames path nearby, you'll see statues of the Salters in recognition of their service to the community. The past year of pandemic has felt like a perpetual winter. And yet in the midst of it all, you have been planting bulbs. Bulbs and seeds of hope, kind deeds, acts of kindness and compassion, encouraging words to neighbours, words of comfort to people in distress, faithful hours of work, practical service and ministry, caring for your communities, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick and elderly. So many prayers offered and so much more beside. Hopefully in the days to come, some of the seeds sown and bulbs planted by you will bear fruit in the lives of others in the days to come, adding that splash of colour into people's lives in these difficult days. And it's quite a thought that the pandemic has given us unexpected opportunities to plant those seeds of love and hope in the name of Jesus. So well done and thank you all once again, Salvation Army family, whatever your part with us is.
These have been incredibly challenging days. And I need to say that the impact of COVID-19 has still probably to be fully realised. So we have a work to do. So what of the days to come as the crisis improves, we hope? I wonder what messages and directions the Lord may want to plant in our hearts as individuals and as core and in our centres as we go forward planting the seeds of, and bulbs of hope and seek to bear the fruit for the kingdom in our daily lives and in our service for the Lord. In these concluding weeks of Lent, I think John's Gospel, chapter 15, will help us. It speaks about the Lord as the ultimate gardener of our hearts, who longs to be invited in and plant the seeds of his spirit within us for life and service. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 5, and then verse 8, says this. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. And if you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. May the Lord help us as we go on planting seeds of love and hope and salvation in the name of Jesus in the days to come. Thank you for listening. God bless you.
God, this is our simple prayer, to know you're there and to keep planting spiritual seeds in our lives, spiritual seeds that are, that are fruit-bearing, Lord, so that we can continue to plant these seeds elsewhere too, Lord. Lord, we pray that you will soften the hearts of our family, our friends, our neighbours, that you will soften and nurture their hearts to allow the seed, God's spiritual seed, Lord, your spiritual seed to grow and allow us, Lord, allow us to be able to be vessels from which you can water and nourish these seeds of hope that will be planted. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. My friends in Hosea, another prophet from the Old Testament, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, we read this. Sow righteousness for yourselves, reap the fruit of unfailing love, and break up your unplowed ground, for it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. My friends, my friends, God is building a people of power. And you are that people of power. And we need to be ready and available. So please, my friends, please reap the fruit of unfailing love. Break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord. Let's sing together our closing song. And it's a message for us to remember during the week. So when you're doing your house chores, when you go out to work, when you when you sat on your own in the house, maybe. Think of this song and accept the promise of God. For I'm building a people of power. Let's sing together and may God bless you all during this coming week.